and welcome back to Dr. Alfredo with me, Dr. Alfredo. And today we have our beautiful yes. host today, Rachel. Would you read us your poem that you brought in today? Alright, my poem is called Introduction to Poetry by Billy Collins. I ask them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide, or press, it, press an ear against its head. I say drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe its way out. Or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waiting at the author's name on the shore. But all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. Okay, would you like to start off in what this poem really means? Well, I actually have no idea. Can we actually go back to the beginning of this and pick it apart, please? Alright. I ask them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide, or press an ear against its hive. Whoa. Whoa. What's that mean? Well, I don't even understand any of that. According to my note cards. Hold it up to the light, to the light like a color slide is a simile. And it's referring to you hold it up the poem to light like a projector and it blows it up. And you're using your senses to see it. And pressing an ear against it is like a metaphor. The hive is the poem, and you're trying to hear it. That's using your senses. That's what that whole first two stanzas are about. So you're telling me that he uses, he's telling you to use your senses when you're reading a poem? That's right, Professor Nyland. Okay. We can continue now. All right. I say drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe its way out, or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. Wait, he's not talking about your senses anymore. What's he, he, I'm totally lost. Well, actually, Professor Nyland, he is talking about your senses. For you see, when you drop a mouse onto a poem and it's probing around, it's using its instincts. It's pushing and prodding and trying to find out using its instincts. Such as when a person walks into a dark room and trying to find a light switch, and when he finally turns it on, feeling around, you know, it's the same as the mouse. And actually, the light switch is a metaphor for understanding. And when he switches it on, he's understanding. Alright. So you have to keep feeling around until you get the meaning of the poem. Exactly. But isn't that like scientific no. kind of like connotation? Because, like, probing, like, an experiment, like, you're pushing things and trying to figure stuff out. Really, what it's talking about is instinct and feeling in the beginning. Oh. Alright. Okay, let's continue on now. Okay. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. What? Now we're talking about water skiing? I thought this poem... go to the beach. Yes. It's not about the beach, actually. What? Uh, <laughs> it's about not going too deep into the poem. It's, it's like a metaphor. You don't, you don't want to go into the poem too deeply. You just want to skim on it. But my teacher makes me do that every day in class. Well, don't listen to her. Okay, Dr. Fredo, I won't from, from now on. Okay, continue, Rachel. All right. But all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with rope and tie, torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. Now this sounds interesting. I like beating people. Yes. But I'm sure it has some deeper meaning. Right, Dr. Fredo? Actually, this is a more simple and direct way to explain what the author is trying to say. He's simply saying that he, wants, he doesn't want you to beat the poem to death. Like, like a prisoner of war. Yes. Trying to get a confession out of them to tell them secrets. In a, in a way, it is like that, yes. Alright. But don't they still hold back the secrets, even though they're being tortured? That's right. Beating it with a hose is such a crude way of trying to find out what it's trying to say. And when you say it really means, that's suggesting that there's an absolute meaning to it. And when you're trying to interpret a poem, there shouldn't be an absolute Absolutely. Alright. So, there's no distinct definition for what a poem means. That's right. Because it's the author writing it. 
So he's the only person who knows. That's exactly right. So we try to find out this stuff and find out the meaning. Using it's your feelings. Our feelings. All right. But so read it all the way through and then we'll discuss it as a whole. All right. I asked them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide or press an ear against its head. I see drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe its way out or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. But all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. So obviously the first part is a lot, is, is not as dark as the last. It gives it a more whimsical yeah. approach. You mean the tone changes? That's right. What? It can do that? The tone can change, and it affects the meaning. Oh. Okay. Well, this has been the end of our uh, segment here with Rachel. Uh, see you next time. I'm Dr. Fredo. And I'm Professor Nyland. Hello, Miss Carol. This poem is pretty much explaining what you do to us every day in class. You make us beat poems to the death. You've turned a class of hard-working, honest AP students into brutal, merciless torturers. We beat and torture poems every day, and what do we get out of it? Nothing! Nothing at all! No meaning or anything. Are you proud of yourself, Miss Carol? Are you?